Okay. Hey, everybody. We're back. Um, citizen focused purpose. So this is the last in the series. We talked about measuring citizen satisfaction, which is measuring customer service. Are the people you're serving satisfied with the services that you're giving them? Then we went ahead the next week and we talked about developing a map for how citizens experience those journeys. So how does your citizens experience a journey from onboarding to exiting um, and what you know what's going right in between and what's not. And then last week we talked about using citizen feedback to drive change. So that's data, right? Using the data that you've collected by using surveys to figure out what again is working in the program, what is it working, what do you need to implement, what resources you need to add, what program programmatic changes that you need to make, all of that stuff. So go back and watch all those videos before you watch this one. And so today we're going to be talking about thinking long term and really and truly all those three pieces fit into this one piece. You have to have those other three pieces in play in order to think long term. I mean, you can think long term before that because some things that you need to do and Ty alluded to it in the last video. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more today. If this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy B. Allen. I'm the owner of TBA Consulting Group. I help social impact businesses to I help to design, build, and fund social impact businesses so that they can live the lifestyle that they want to live while impacting their communities. And when she said the lifestyle they want to live, she like she did it like this, like look, like this is a lifestyle. <laughs> right, right, right. A lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an owner of Tidal Enterprises. I work mainly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. Uh -huh. That's what I do. And today, what we're talking about, look, I, I just like to lose the topic. Like every time, I'm like, okay, look, this is what we're doing something with citizens today. Thinking long term. Long term. And I can't even think long term, right? That's like right there. Like, <laughs> not the short term memory, but the long term. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Long and that's vision, right? Thinking, mm -hmm. thinking long term is being able to forecast, like, look, look to look ahead to know where you're going. But not just thinking, because sometimes we get stuck in the think mode, right? We are visionaries. We get stuck. a lot of times. <laughs> we get stuck in the think mode. And we're like, okay, I'm thinking long. I'm thinking long. And I'm, I'm just staying there. But I'm not thinking about the process in the middle to get me there. Um, but you, you still want to keep that in mind. You want to know where you're going. Again, you want to know, you know, what, what does it look like for my business, for my community, for my organization long term? And where do I fit into that long term picture? Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes, Tracy, it, I, and I see this a lot with nonprofits when we, when they start, they're trying to solve a problem that is temporary, you know. And for a lot of them, addressing a temporary problem is also going to mean that they're going to get temporary funding, <laughs> right? And if they haven't considered all the ways that this thing could turn. They're going to end up struggling for funding, struggling for support, because this is not, it no longer becomes an important thing. So then nobody is really trying to lean in to support them, right? Let's talk about it. COVID. Let's, let's if you started an organization to solve COVID problems, just COVID problems, that's a very short term problem. And you think about how many, how many pandemics, you know, before our time that, you know, mm -hmm. before that has come have come and that that's, that's kind of what they do right it's, it's kind of like you're doing this thing you got a cold when the cold first came to the scene it was oh my gosh everybody's done a couple of people and you know not like that anymore flu comes mm -hmm. and you do this thing hiv is one mm -hmm. of the things where now you, you, it's treatable you can sustain your life people live in whatever but how do how does that change you know i, I, you know, I, I remember when i worked in hiv uh, when I first started working in HIV, prevention education was the thing. Mm -hmm. because you, you people were getting HIV at alarming rates, and they were dying. You know, it was like, and the, and the treatment was terrible. Folk were dying just because they were being treated. It was like, okay, what? It was a mess. Mm -hmm. And most of the funding at that time was being directed toward prevention education because you know what? If we can't treat it. We can at least help people learn how not to get it, right? So this is what, 
as time went on and treatment became better, you know, Magic Johnson figured out, hey, if we if we reduce the viral load with this pill, then we it's gonna be cool, right? We can figure this out and we can we can live, we can be healthy, we can do this, this, and this. So mm-hmm. what happened with prevention education dollars? Right? They kind of went down. Mm-hmm. When, you know, you can treat it, then how about then funders start putting money into treatment and 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 things like compl- it, adherence to medic medicines and you know that kind of stuff so what do you do instead of changing your mission from oh we can't do we can't do education anymore we can still educate but what if we educate people about how to stay in treatment what if we educate people about um you know how to keep their viral loads down and how not to continue to, pa- to pass the virus along and and, and and that kind of stuff right but you ha- you have to think where might this go even with something like covid what happens when you know, vaccines are, are, are widespread and everybody's and everybody's immune. And every, what do you do with your organization then or your service then? If you uh, you started a business to sell PPE and nobody's wearing masks anymore, mm-hmm. so what do you what do you do? Right. Yeah. And that's what it is about pivoting. Right. Always having a plan B in place in case something goes awry. Right. You can't just be tunnel visioned when it comes to what it is that you want, you want to do. Now, I'm not telling you to mission drift. <laughs> you don't want to mission drift. You just want to pivot within your actual mission. And we did a whole series on mission drifts. So if you haven't seen it, go watch that too. Right. But thinking long-term because we know things are forever changing right? Like there's this meme that goes around that there's a sound that your children, if you have children, people in our age group, right time, there's a sound that they would never know. And that's the sound of a fax machine or connecting to the internet. Like they don't know what it, it sounds like to die. <laughs> the phone, I, true story. And this is probably not for this, but look, my, my husband was in the hospital true story, and, I, and the, there was a phone, like a, a, a red, like a rotary phone sitting in the hospital. I tell my daughter to call my mom. She's mm-hmm. looking at this phone, like with that, like, well, how do you, how do you do that? What do you what do? What do you do? How do you use this? Well, just use your cell phone and just see that we mm-hmm. our cell phone second. Okay, well, but she she was just looking at it. This was a few years ago. I'm like, smart, my daughter is brilliant, right? <laughs> but it's like she's looking at it like, what am I supposed what am I supposed to do with this thing? Like, really? Yeah. Not and we're not that old, okay? <laughs> so imagine if you started a organization for per se to help people to learn how to use the internet back then, how to use the internet and a computer back then, using dial-up, using analog when you had to type in some code. Everybody knew how to do a little bit of coding back in the day because that's how you use computers, well, right? Yeah. <laughs> you had to know your ones and your zeros and all of that stuff in order to use a computer effectively back then. So really and truly, coding is not a new thing. We're all coders if we were using computers back in the day. Um, so, so if you decided to start that, look at where we are from when I was in high school or junior high, right, to where we are now. So if you don't want pivot with the time, like every time something changed, you had to change the program or the service that you were offering. That is what I mean when I say being able to pivot. You're still providing the same service. Your mission is still the same. It's to help with computer literacy. Mm-hmm. But how computer literacy works then to now, if your organization is, let's say, 30 years old, is completely different. So your programs had to change. The way you delivered your programs had to change. Everything may have been in been um, in person at that time. Now you could deliver that service via the internet like we are right now, right? So those are the types of pivotings that we're talking about, looking long-term. Um, maybe you didn't see this because I didn't see this when I was younger, like talking into your watch. That was something that you saw on Star Trek. But anyway. <laughs> it's a new black, right? So everything, Star Trek is a new black. Everything is Star Trek now. I'm like, oh, we're doing virtual meetings and stuff. They were doing this on the Scotty Mobile, right? You over here like, oh, you don't talk to somebody like, like that on the computer? Oh, that was like cool. Like, <laughs> What a more realistic um, analogy would be when Ty talked about when I was talking in the last one about um, the GD program and us not realizing that, you know, most of the people who came in um, 
were going to be single moms. Maybe if they had done some more reconnaissance prior to starting the program, they would have realized that most of the people who would have come into the program would have been single mothers and that most of them would have children under the age of, you know, a certain age and that most of them, that, that we would have had those services in place prior to the program starting versus after the program started. So thinking long term, looking at things holistically in and around and through the pro lens of the program, how the program is going to be run is going to be imperative so that you can pivot easily. This is all about pivoting. That's it, right? And easily. of course, using all the data you collected, right, as a way to help you think long term about what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Until next time, guys, thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.